This video demonstrates how to quickly and easily install a GCA actuator. The product package includes an anti-rotation bracket and mounting screws, a self-centering shaft adapter, a locking clip, a position indicator, a 3 mm hex key, an open-air GCA spring return electronic damper actuator, and installation instructions. In addition, you may need the following tools to complete the installation. A drill with 5 32nd inch bit or self-tapping screws and a screw gun. A small Phillips screwdriver. A 10 mm wrench. A pencil and a tape measure. First, determine the rotation direction of the damper in order to orient the actuator for clockwise or counterclockwise operation. Here, the damper rotates counterclockwise to open. For a spring return actuator, determine the desired power fail position. Here, we want the damper to close automatically upon power failure. Next, make sure the damper shaft length is at least 3 inches and that the shaft diameter is compatible. Now we are ready to install the actuator. On the actuator, the manual rotation arrow indicates the direction of the actuator rotation. Turn the actuator to the counterclockwise side since we want it to rotate counterclockwise to open. Insert the shaft adapter at the alignment mark on the actuator. Note that actuators are shipped with 5 degrees of preload for tight seal compression when the damper closes. This is released the first time the actuator is operated. Secure the shaft adapter with the locking clip. With the damper closed, mark the shaft center line for a visual indication of the position. Place the actuator on the shaft and tighten the shaft adapter by hand. The self-centering jaws hold the damper shaft in the center to eliminate side loading and provide a secure no-slip connection to the shaft. Next, insert the anti-rotation bracket into the slot at the bottom of the actuator. This bracket can be oriented at different angles or bent to stand off in an application. Using the holes in the anti-rotation bracket as a guide, drill a hole at each end of the bracket. Then, secure the bracket with the screws provided or use self-tapping screws. Tighten the damper actuator to the shaft with the wrench to 7.5 foot-pounds torque maximum. Attach the position indicator and your installation is complete. Next, let's demonstrate the manual override feature which is used to move the damper in the absence of power. For a spring return actuator, insert the 3 mm hex key into the manual override opening. Turn the key in the direction of the arrow until the damper is in the desired position. While holding the key in place, insert a screwdriver into the gear train lock pin and turn slowly in the same direction as the arrow until you hear a click. The actuator is now held in place. To release the manual override, turn the key about 5 degrees in the direction of the arrow. Once the actuator returns to the fail-safe position, you can remove the key. For a non-spring return actuator, simply push a button and move the lever. When released, the equipment is held in place. To use the actuator to mechanically limit the damper rotation, set the mechanical range adjustment. First, make sure the actuator is in the zero degrees position and that the five degrees of preload is released. Next, remove the locking clip and the self-centering shaft adapter. Rotate the shaft adapter until the position indicator matches the desired angle of rotation. Now insert the shaft adapter and fasten it with the locking clip. The actuator stroke is now adjusted. Now all of the parameters have been set on the actuator.